it's a uh, super simple. Just saying, uh, life doesn't always give you the lemons. I could really use something to drink because I am so thirsty. Get me a zinc. Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 152? 100 and... Fuck you! 52. Uh, yeah, I said that. 152. Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card. But it's not tradition to show you what's on the card. But you'll find out anyway because I'll talk about it. Mm. Thirsty I am. Thirsty says I. Thirsty because I have no Janice. Janice is gone. The corona took her out. It took her to the beach. I should I can't say the word. I said the word, but you can't say it anymore, right? Took I took the the Janice Meister to the beach and I said, "Hey, we can't drink this ocean water, so maybe you should just go home cuz I don't need you here." She ended up getting corona. Uh, now she's dead. So. Looks like I may die of thirst because it's only been one day and I haven't had a single drop of fluid in one whole day. So. Let's see how long we can go without water. I mean, it should be, I mean, how, right? It's not that important. Water's not that important. Ask Daryl. I was talking to Daryl, my neighbor, the other day. I said, hey, Daryl, um, you know, this whole water thing, I think it's kind of overrated. We don't need it, really, right? I mean, what is it? It's just a liquid that sloshes around. <coughs> what, 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 what purpose could a sloshy, transparent liquid... What did what did I say? What benefit can we have from drinking a sloshy, transparent liquid? Am I right, Daryl? And he's he he didn't he didn't say much. He just said ah, sure. And he he continued taking his garbage outside because he was taking his garbage out. Um, Daryl one of those guys that if he has a, a a hole in his garbage and there's like juice leaking out of the garbage bag. And it's dripping on his pants, like down into his socks. He's the kind of guy that just wouldn't notice. And you would, you would, you know, the the <laughs> the average person would say something, be like, "Hey, Daryl, there's garbage juice dripping into your shoe." But I'm I'm the kind of person who just likes to observe. I like to just observe when things are going wrong, and no one notices. <laughs> That it's going wrong, but it's fun. It's fun just watching something go wrong. And you know if you said something, you could stop it and prevent it. But if you know no one's going to get hurt, <laughs> and you're just slowly watching something uh, reveal itself in a negative way, it's fun, okay? So I'm the type of person who would watch Daryl have his garbage juices drip into his shoe and I wouldn't say anything and I would continue to <laughs> have a conversation with him to see how much garbage juice can get into his shoe and then it's a nice little game a nice little social game you can play is this is this is this how psychopaths think probably right Daryl doesn't exist, by the way. And made him up. 
<laughs> I've got a nice little buzz buzz happening right now. Not from alcohol. Are you kidding me? No, not alcohol. Not happening. From uh, the other stuff, the green plant that's kind of fluffy. <sighs> Maybe that was mold. Maybe I'll smoke with some mold. Anyway, I was going to segue. Oh, yeah, into this. Last night, well, yesterday all day, I was preparing some uh, some butter. I was churning some butter the modern way without a butter churner. Uh, uh, the butter I made is green and uh, made from the same substance that is currently intoxicating me, if you know what I mean. Oh, that's my square. That's my square cheeking. <laughs> that's my chair squeaking. My square cheeking. That's way better. Those freaking knees. Just strap on my boots and watch me go. But I can't ski until December. Till then I'm just a sex offender. That's what I'm talking about. You want some way too many napkins. Bapkins. You guys got any bags of bird ham in here? <laughs> we ran out of bird ham. <clears throat> Listen, folks. Where was I? Right, I made some butter. Okay? And then I made some cookies and put that butter in the cookies. And let me tell you, it's some strong. It's really, it's really strong butter. The butter. The butter's strong, okay? Because I was like, I'm going to eat one cookie, okay? But then I was like, nah, let's just do two. I'm sure I'll be fine with two, okay? Ate two cookies, and I was like, wow, this is, you know, edibles. They take a while. So I waited, and I waited, and I was sick of waiting, as this usually goes. I didn't eat more cookies, but I just had a green bastard hoot, okay? If you don't know who the green bastard is, then you don't know this show. So anyway, I had a green bastard hoot, and then I waited some more. You know, I got my regular smoked smoked high from the green bastard, and then that went away, and I was waiting a bit longer, and then... Uh, then the edible high started to hit, and I'm like, ooh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> and then I uh, I waited some more, and it kept growing and growing. And then at one point, it was just like, whoo, too steep. This is too steep of a mountain we're going up or down on. <laughs> and then it got real intense, and I was like, oh, shit. Maybe I should have had one cookie or half of a cookie. So, if I partake in the cookies tonight, it's going to be half a cookie. Okay? A cookie chopped in half, brother. <clears throat> I just want to play this wine woman once again, because it, it really makes me smile. Because <laughs> there's nothing I find more funny then uh, when someone drops food, I may have mentioned this before, but like if someone has a plate of food, <laughs> like soup or really anything, okay, and they fall or like even if the food just falls, it goes all over the place, it is the funniest fucking shit. That will always make me laugh and it always has. Like when someone's pulling like a bunch of mushrooms out of the fridge <laughs> and they spill every one of them all over the floor and they're like ah oh, fuck and like to them it's not funny at all but to me all i want to do is laugh i love it when food falls on the floor but like if someone's the only time it's not funny is when like if it was like a homeless person who hadn't eaten in days and he shows up to a soup kitchen and he's getting his first meal that he's had in days and he's weak 
and crumbly and falling apart. And he's got that soup on the tray and he's shaking because he's, you know, for one, he's weak. But but the other reason is because he's he's excited. okay. and you can see, even though he just wants. You know, he's just struggling and he and he kind of just wants life to be over with because he can't handle it anymore. There's still a part of him that's got like a little smirk, a little glimmer in his eye because he knows he can finally eat. So if he dropped his soup on the floor, that wouldn't be funny. <laughs> but pretty well every other circumstance of food falling on the floor or someone spilling juice or whatever, spilling some sort of liquid, like a slushy. That's just funny, funny. Okay? And the only way to top that is to have the food fall on the person <laughs> who's excited to eat it <laughs> or drink it or whatever, right? Like I once was eating a plate of pancakes. I was with my family. We were at a restaurant breakfast time. I was eating a big plate of pancakes full of syrup, whipped cream, a bunch of different like berry sauces. There was like a, a, a strawberry sauce and a blueberry sauce. <laughs> And there was fruit all over the place, okay? And, like, I guess my plate was right on the edge of the table. And as I'm cutting my pancake, the plate completely 180s onto my lap, okay? So I had pancake and whipped cream and everything all over my lap. That was a good time for me. I don't care, okay? It's the only thing negative that can happen to me that'll make me laugh. Well, there's pr there's probably a few other things. So when I saw this this lady spill her wine in her face, it was nonstop laughter for me. It's not the same anymore because I've seen it too much and I've ruined it. I ruined it. I do that all the time. I find a new good song that I like. I listen to that shit till I hate it, and I got and I'm 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 getting better at not doing that. But let's just check this girl out again. Okay, for the audio listeners. There's this lady laying down on a couch, okay? She's doing the fucking Instagram, uh, you know, card thing. The You know, when you do the selfie and, like, the the fucking thing shuffles over, over your head of different scenarios. Like, for an example, if you're doing, like, a Disneyland, a Disney-themed one, it'll be like, which Disney character are you? And it'll just like shuffle through the characters on your forehead and pick one for you. Well, she's doing this, and it's what cheese are you? And she's got a a glass of wine, okay? And she's laying on the couch. <laughs> and she like I don't know. She goes to like readjust herself and, and like spills the wine in her face, and it's great. <laughs> okay, now so the wine glass like falls <laughs> and she goes to catch it. <laughs> yeah, she lifts it back up, it like all goes in her face. It bounces off her titty. <laughs> it bounces off her titty. <laughs> Look. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> It is still funny. And the face she makes afterwards is the best. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Oh, and she's American cheese. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good video. That is a good video. <clears throat> Oompa Loompa body ass bitch! So it was Easter. Right? You're a pussy. <laughs> what just happened? There he is. Right hey, there. what's up, bro? Okay, man. <laughs> Wait till Saturday, bro. You're a pussy. Wait till Saturday. My poopoo looks like angel hair pasta. My poopoo looks like angel hair pasta. 
So it was Easter. I, I don't care about Easter. I don't care what you care about Easter. Um, yeah, it, like even if you wanted to celebrate it, you couldn't because of the whole social isolation. You know what I'm suing? But uh, if you play Animal Crossing, you know those stupid fucking eggs was uh, the theme of the whole fucking cross. While, 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 you know, right up until Easter happened. You know, you try to dig up fossils, you're getting eggs. You try to go fishing, you're getting eggs. You try to shake a tree, you're getting eggs. You hear the goddamn balloon coming every goddamn five seconds. You're like, oh, maybe that's a present. Nope, it's a goddamn egg. The eggs were good for the first day. Because you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. We can make Easter stuff. And then it's like, oh, the next day, okay, I've made all the Easter stuff. I don't want to do this anymore. The third day rolls around. I still don't want to do this. But it was just like 14 days or something of just eggs everywhere. It wasn't even, you didn't even want to play the goddamn game. Listen, Nintendo, if you're going to do a, like a holiday theme takeover like this, make it two days tops. Like, just do it Easter Sunday and Easter Monday. That's all it needed to be. You didn't need to stretch this shit out. Because the people, you get so many goddamn eggs constantly that you build all the shit right away. And I mean, yeah, you could say you could take the eggs and build a bunch of Easter stuff and sell it all for a high price, which is what I did. But you know what? You can do that with every other aspect of the game. You know, if you just... No one wants that. There's other ways. Who am I to say what Nintendo does? Don't listen to me, people. Please. I'm getting real thirsty. I might have to go make my own drink. Oh boy. Can we do that? Is that legal? Is that legal? No, don't do it. Don't be a beagle. Don't be a goddamn beagle. <sighs> Look, the only, there's there's good things about Easter cuz when Easter comes around, you know, you can say to yourself, you can be like, hey, spring's here. Oh, my God. Warm weather, especially if you're living in Canada. Because you gotta, you gotta, you're stuck with four to five months of just, sometimes four to six months of just brutal cold and snow and wind and ice and brutal, brutal cold temperatures. And then springtime comes around and everything starts melting. And everything's wet and sloshy and slushy and muddy. But it's only last for a little bit. And then you get the spring weather, which is not too hot, not too cold. And you go, woohoo! I can start walking my dog again. Because when it's that cold and you bring your dog outside, their paws freeze to the ground. Because it's cold outside, especially if you got a little tiny ooble like I do. An ooble shivers even in plus 20 degrees Celsius weather. Okay. So, imagine him in anything less than zero degrees. He doesn't last very long, so you can't take the ooble for a walk. So he poops in the yard, and then you can't pick the poop up until s springtime again because it just freezes to the ground. I mean, I could poop it up this, you know, immediately after he poops, but that would mean I have to go out with him every time he poops in the brutal cold weather. So I'm like, yeah, just leave it and wait till the spring, which maybe isn't that good of an idea because I did that this year and there was so much poop. I filled 
a garbage bag, a literal regular large sized black garbage bag. I filled it with poop. It was so heavy that I, it completely ripped the garbage bag. I was, you know, I put it in the bin that the truck lifts into the back, you know, it's got the arm and it lifts it into the fucking dumpster part of itself. And it was struggling to lift that fucking garbage because it was so heavy. Poop is like a bunch of bricks. It was so goddamn heavy. And that wasn't even all of it. Because I I scooped up what I could and there were still parts of the yard that were still frozen because it was all shaded area. So I had to wait for that to thaw. And then I filled, well I did, I half filled another garbage bag. There was so much poop. If we could find a way to use dog poop or even human poop, all poop, if we could turn all poop into an energy source, we'd be set. Eat and poop. Eat, poop, repeat. (laughs) Right? That would be their mission statement. Eat, poop, repeat. Eat, poop, live, repeat. Eat, poop, live, repeat. Anyway... But now, now we're kind of we're, we're just about past the slushy season. There's still snow around here and there, but you know it's pretty well all melted now. So I can take Ubel for walks, and you get to and you, and you get to remind yourself of all the things you used to see when you go for walks, and you know. Like I, I remember I told a story on this podcast of these two people who were like building a wheelchair ramp. And there was something weird about them. I don't remember what happened. Like she was yelling at her husband on the roof or something. I don't know. Anyway, that wheelchair ramp is done now. Um, well, let's just jump back to Easter for a second because there's these there's this video. Of these chillin, these chi- <laughs> these children. How long have we been going? Okay, 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 okay. There's this video of these children, and the Easter Bunny comes to visit them at their house, and they are absolutely frightened, absolutely frightened. So why don't we take a look? And you tell me if you would be frightened. Sorry, audio listeners. You gotta listen. Oh. Daddy. Oh, they like it. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Oh. Isn't that fun? Do that to your children. Every parent should do this to their children. Scare the absolute living shit out of them. Ooh, feels good. I love scaring children. Imagine how terrified. <laughs> Imagine how terrified those children are. Because I can relate to this. There's, there. I still remember scary ass things from when I was a child. You know, if I saw them now, they just wouldn't be scary. Because as an adult, we know that's just. <laughs> Okay, now I can't stop it. We know that's just some f- some funk fella. It's probably their uncle in an Easter Bunny outfit. And if you notice, like the first the fir- the first kid, when he sees it, he's like, "Oh, it's the Easter Bunny," and he's like, "That's not the Easter Bunny," or something. I don't remember, but that is a scary looking rabbit. Let's zoom in here. Right? Oh, gold award. Like that's not <laughs> That's not a friendly looking rabbit. Why don't we watch it one more time? Pay attention to what the first kid says right off the bat. And then pay attention to how the bunny walks. Yeah. 
Even the mother's scared. She's like, oh my god. <laughs> but you can see how that would be frightening, right? You can see that? You can see how that would be frightening? You can see that? I can't tell you how goddamn thirsty I am right now. I am so thirsty. My mouth is it's dry Clown. it's dry like Clown. it's been Clown. um you ever been so dehydrated that you can't even think straight you ever been so dehydrated that you can't even think straight. And then you talk to animals. You ever think the quarantine is going to make everyone go insane? Why don't we do a throwback here? This is an old friend of the sh of the of the podcast. Mr. James Cage White, otherwise known as Handsome James Cage on TikTok. And he's got something to say. Hi, everyone. Look, there's a dog here. Hello? Hello, dog. How are you? How are you? I dare not touch her because I w I'm afraid she may attack me. Oh, okay. Say Hi, everyone. She may attack. This, okay, here's the, here's the Della Russo. James Cage White. I've talked about him. You know I've talked about him. Ooh, my stomach's rumbling. Not in a hungry way either. Like, a, ooh, you ate something that you shouldn't have ate kind of way. Ah. Oh, I'm having a breast. I mean a baby. Look, James Cage is getting a lot of slack from his mama. His mama controls him. Ow. <laughs> she really does. She's hitting him in the face because he can't get a girlfriend and she's calling him ugly and stuff. <laughs> Go follow him on Twitter. You can read all about it. He posts about it. He's like, my mom's so mean to me. The guy's 35, bro. Ow, my tum tum. Cut it off. I'm not saying I'm not saying James White is weird, but what I am saying is Matthew McConaughey. If he wasn't a famous actor, he would be that weird guy at Ralph's. <laughs> Bounty hunter Bobby Bandito, but you can call me Bobby B. I say it's high time we catch this killer, because we got more living to do. Here's how. So you lay down your favorite bandana, unfold it like so. Get your trusty coffee filter that you had on the go. Get your two rubber bands. Roll one down one end like this. Roll the other one down this end like that. Fold them over like so. Grab a hold, and you're good to go. Now remember, stay at home. But if you gotta go, strap it on like so. Now, I'm challenging all you triple Bs out there. It's time for us to band together and see who can make the most badass bandito bandana so we can beat the Corona V. Bobby B style. Bobby B. Right? You see, you see, this is the kind of guy you would see at your groceries. He's the kind of guy who would show up to your party. And to him, he would feel like he's impressing everyone with his ways of his words. 
and he would see the laughter and he would see he would see the stares but he would perceive it as they love me they absolutely love me but everyone else is uh you know is aware enough of the fact of what's really going on and everyone is staring at you and laughing at you not with you but uh you know you got the confidence you can make it work okay make it work make it work like a burp purple nurple purple freaking nurple hey, hey, hey. it's been um. Um, excuse me for a second, folks. I am like the elephant. I never forget. You ever been to an art gallery? You ever seen something like this at an art gallery? You ever been to an art gallery and think, this is bullshit. Why did I, why am I paying to be in here? Or you ever go to an art gallery and think, wow, this is really great. But I don't know why. Is it really great? Or are they brainwashing me into thinking that what I'm looking at is great, where in reality... It's not. I mean, you can look at a detailed painting and say, oh, I admire that because I know I couldn't do that even if I practiced for 10 years, okay? It's impressive. There's some value to it. There's work involved and an amazing result came from it. But then you look at other pieces of art like, let's say, it's just a table. It's the table used to display the pieces of art in the gallery, but some asshole decides he's going to come in and say, the table itself that is used all throughout this gallery to display what is supposed to be the art that I'm supposed to work on, I'm just going to not do that part of it. The most crucial, hard-working key element of the the art gallery, I'm just going to not do that and just say that the table that's supposed to display my artwork is the artwork itself. And you can't question what I do because I'm an established artist. And if this is what I perceive as art, then it shall be so. Because there is no precise definition or vantage point to any piece of art. Oliver, he's dreaming. So if you try to tell me that this isn't art, then I'm going to tell you you're wrong and I'm going to cancel you. You know, there's a. <laughs> I don't remember the point I was trying to make, but uh, you know, you know what, you know what I'm saying. You go to the art galleries sometimes, and you see stuff like this, or you'll see just like a a a, a hobo's shoe, in a glass container. And they try to write this little paragraph about how it uh, it's meaningful and powerful and it's a message and it's like no this is a dirty disgusting shoe that you found probably dangling from a telephone wire and you just took it and put it in a glass case and tried to imagine what it means to you There should be, you know what, there should be two different, for every art gallery, 
that's just the bullshit, there should be another one right next to it that has <laughs> art that had some work put into it, you know? Like, I can't even say, okay? It's like, it's just one of those things, like trying to explain what a color is to a blind person. It's just hard to encapsulate how you really feel about these artwork, you know? Because I do respect art. I always have. It's uh, it's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. Uh, and to go against it and question that is against the idea of art itself, you know? Which is super meta and super cringe. But it's the truth. But what I'm trying to get at I here is... Uh, sometimes sometimes you go to an art gallery and you're truly impressed and you know exactly why you were impressed and you were happy you spent the money and you would gladly go again and I'm just saying if more art galleries did what this one did I think there would be a lot more people going to art galleries so let's take a look this is an art gallery this ball is part of an art gallery. <laughs> and it's just rolling down the road. Look at this. It even rolls over a car. And there was someone in the car. You see the door open. Did you see that? Watch it again. Watch, watch, watch where my mouse is. This first car here. Look, the door's open. The guy shuts the door as the ball comes at him. Wow. Imagine the adrenaline rush you'd get from this art gallery. Now this, it would be even greater, <laughs> it would be even better if at the end of all this, they bring the ball back in and they were like, thank you for watching our demonstration. If that was all part of the plan, they timed it in a way where they knew there was not going to be any traffic coming or going. There was just going to be parked cars. The guy in the car who shuts the door was planted. The guy on the roof knew it was going to happen. So they, they, they filmed it for a reason because they knew it was going to go viral. What if that? Now that is something I could see an artist doing, you know? They do shit like that all the time. So you could see this and think, you know, in any other scenario, this would just be an accident. But because this is an art gallery, you have to speculate if this was all part of the plan. <laughs> you know? And if it was, then that is awesome. Just like when that banana was taped to the wall and the guy took it off and ate it and said it was a, a, a performance art piece. This is, this is more, this is performance art. And I think more, al more galleries should take on this method. Just have some surprise, surprises. Don't have them too often though, because then Anytime anything happens at a gallery, people are going to be like, oh, it's happening, something's happening, even though it might actually be a mistake one time. Or like, let's say your, your galleries do this on a regular basis, a fire breaks out, people are like, oh my god, it's another show, here we go! <laughs> it's like, no, it's real! And they're like, yeah, okay, I believe you. <laughs> and they all burn to death. And they're like, great show. Good job. That was a good art performance. <clears throat> when was the last time you shit your pants? Um. When was it? Can you remember it? I'm trying to remember mine. I've shit my pants many a times. I remember one. I think I told this story. I was delivering chocolate bars, selling chocolate bars door to door for like a school fundraiser. 
And it was so ironic. As I was selling chocolate bars in the summer where the chocolate was melting in the bag, I shit my pants. Had to walk back with melty chocolate. Anyway. Uh, when what that might was that the last time that can't be the last time. It had to have been a while because I can't remember the last time I shit my pants. And I mean, with this whole toilet paper fiasco going on, people can't get toilet paper. More people might be shitting their pants. I have this photo here. That was, uh, uh, it was deemed not safe for work on Reddit. But I viewed it, and it's, I don't think it needs to be classified as not safe for work. But I guess this person had, uh, an obstruction in their bowels, which prevented them from not being able to poop for a few weeks this is according to the title um and so i guess the nurse or whoever unblocked the bowels and uh an explosion occurred and there's a photo of the aftermath and it kind of just looks like it doesn't look like poop it looks like chocolate pudding Um, so this might be a fake post, but either way, I just want to show you in case it is real. Okay. Let me just see if I can make this bigger somehow. Okay. That's nice and big. Uh, here it is. Yeah. So kind of like, I guess it's in this room here. Um, I guess, I don't know. But there's like shit dripping all over the wall. Oh, maybe this is shit. Because it's got a little green tinge to it. Oh, God. I might puke. Okay. This might actually be shit. See, from a distance, it kind of just looks like brown pudding. But I'm seeing chunks. Okay. Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, why don't we just move on ahead to today's recommendation? Since we're at the we're at the end of this podcast here, um, I'm gonna recommend another podcast. Probably, I'm gonna recommend a lot of podcasts on this podcast because all I do is watch podcasts and make podcasts. I love podcasts. Okay, but I'm going to recommend a podcast. Uh, it's a newer one, and you're probably already familiar with it. I've mentioned it. It's called Bad Friends with Bobby Lee and Cheeto Santino, Andrew Santino. Uh, it's If you want to laugh at a podcast, this is the place to go. It's absolutely going to make you laugh, and if you don't laugh, well, then... Uh, you either a don't have a sense good sense of humor or b you're just uh there's something terrible going on in your life and you don't have any room for laughter so you take it out on on people who try to make the world a more fun place so and if that's the type of person you are then uh maybe you should just get your life together first before you try to watch these podcasts okay so that's my recommendation um bad friends it's called it's on youtube it's on all the audio platforms spotify and yeah i don't have to tell you this okay you know this if i tell you there's a podcast called bad friends i don't have to tell you where to find it there's a thing called google and if you just type in bad friends into the search bar, okay, and hit enter, it's going to take you right to the source. Okay? And even if it doesn't, it'll only take you a few more little advanced search methods, basic search methods, to find it. 
So don't bitch at me because you can't fucking find a link to the goddamn Bad Friends podcast. If you can't find the Bad Friends podcast within the first search results of your Google search, then you are absolutely insane and mentally unstable. And you do not deserve to have a computer or smart device. So check out Bad Friends, um, Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino. That's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Poopcast. I hope you enjoyed looking at the poop splatter. Uh, Please like, please comment, please subscribe. Please hit that bell notification and please brush your teeth because I can I can actually smell your breath from here and it's starting to make me gag worse than this, this diarrhea photo. So, that's it. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.